Welcome to Automate Now, this is Marco Cruz. In the last video, we learned how to input text and how to read text from an input field. In today's video, we're going to learn all about checkboxes. So let's dive in. Before we start learning about checkboxes, we have a few housekeeping items that we need to take care of. From time to time, we may tweak our framework to make it better. What we're going to do today is, is to try to limit the creations of new class instances. For example, here we have a new instance of a class. Here we're creating another instance of a class. Rather than doing this inside of our test, we're going to put that away and put it in this base test class. So let's go over there now. So this setup method is the first method to run before any other test. So what we're going to do here is to instantiate all of those classes that we're going to need inside of our test classes. And we're going to say protected. And this is just to make sure that this is accessible only by those classes that inherit this class. And we'll say navigation bar. And we'll call it navbar. Next, we'll do the home page. And lastly, we'll do sandbox. In our setup method, we're going to instantiate those classes. We're going to do that after the home page has been launched. And we'll say navbar is equal to new navigation bar. Home page. And sandbox page. And we're all set here. And now we can get rid of this here. We can also get rid of this here and replace it with navbar. In the sandbox here, we're going to replace with sandbox page. And we're all set. Now we no longer need to use that new keyword within our test. This makes our test simpler and easier for just about anyone to understand. The next minor change that we're going to perform in order to make our test easier to read will be to get rid of this part of the assertion. So instead of saying assert dot and then the method name, we're simply going to use the method name. Notice that we're getting an error. So we're going to hit alt enter and say import static method. And we're going to import this assert dot assert equals from test in G. Notice that we have a new import here. And this will allow us to call assert equals without having to specify the class name. Even better yet, we can replace this assert equals with an asterisk. And this will allow us to call just about any method within that assert class without having to specify assert in front of it. So for example, we can say assert false or assert true and so on. Now that we've finished doing our changes to this sandbox test class, we're going to do the same thing for this home page test class. And we are done here. The next change that we're going to do is going to be inside of our framework. So we're going to go to this home page here. And here we have this by locator. We're going to make this private. By making this private, we're practicing encapsulation, which is another key concept in object oriented programming. By making this private, it will only be visible within this class. Any other class that wishes to use this field will only be able to do so by using public methods such as these ones. Now I'm going to perform the same change in these other page objects. Now that those changes are done, we're ready to start learning about checkboxes. So let's go. So we're going to start by creating a new method here. Now let's take a look at the application. Now let's inspect these elements. Let's say that we want to select this first checkbox. We'll take a look at this box here. And we see that there is an input tag. And we have this text that says option 1. We also have a value called option 1. So we could design the test in a way that we need to pass this option one text, or we could use a simpler method by simply passing the number. In our case, we're going to use the latter. If the user wants to select option one, we're going to pass the number one. Now let's go ahead and write a locator for this. You could use a locator tool to find a locator for you. But when you're just getting started with the automation, I highly suggest that you try to do this on your own. This way you will get a very good understanding on how locators work. So we're going to hit control F and we're going to use an X path. And we're going to say forward slash forward slash and write input followed by open and close brackets. Here we're going to say at value is equal to and then in quotes, we're going to say option one. And notice that we found the element and there's only one match. So we're going to use this X path here. Let's go ahead and copy it. We'll go back to our test. Now remember that we're not going to use any locators within our test. Instead, we're going to say sandbox page and we're going to assume that we already have a method called select checkbox. So we'll say dot select checkbox. And this will take a string. I'm going to say the option. And I'm going to pass in one for option one. 
Now let's go ahead and implement this method. This is going to return a handle to the sandbox page. So we'll say sandbox page and here we're going to call this option. When here we say return this. Now we write the logic and we're going to say driver dot find element then by dot xpath. Now we're going to enter the xpath that we found in the website. We're going to need to get rid of this number one here to make this xpath dynamic. So we can pass multiple values here. So let's delete this. Then we're going to put a quotation here, then plus, and then we're going to add the option. And this is going to pass the value that was provided when we called this method. Now you can see why we chose to use an xpath here. That way we can pass the value for the option we wish to select. Also, you will notice that this by is not being declared up here at the beginning of the class. Instead, we're doing it inside of the method. And this is because we're modifying this xpath and it is not going to be the same xpath every time this method is called. The last thing that we're going to do here for this method is to add some Java doc. And this is going to help in explaining what this method is doing. So we're going to say for slash star star and here you can give a quick description of what this method does. We're just going to say that it selects a checkbox. Then we're going to say that this option parameter has a range from one to three. Because if we look at our website here, we see that we have three options, one, two, three. So here we'll say range is one, two, three. And for this return tag, you may enter sandbox page if you wish, or you can leave it out. I'm going to leave it out for now. Now let's go back to our test. So we have now selected the checkbox. So what we need to do next is to verify that the checkbox that we chose has been selected. So we need to make some type of assertion. And the assertion we're going to make is assert true. And here we're going to call a method that we're going to implement from sandbox page. Sandbox page dot checkbox is selected. And we're going to pass in the number one. Let's go ahead and implement this method. This is going to return a boolean, so we're going to leave it like that. And here we're going to call it option. Now we're going to return driver.findElement and we're going to copy this xpath. Because this time we want to make sure that this is selected. Up here we're finding the element to click it. Now we're going to find the same element to make sure that it is selected. And the method we use for that is called is selected. So we'll say dot is selected. You can use this method for things such as checkboxes and radio buttons. Now let's go back to our test and let's go ahead and add an error message here. Now let's run this test. And here we see that the test passed. We saw that the checkbox was selected just as we expected. Now everything happened very quickly. If you ever want to slow things down, you can put a breakpoint here. So we're going to click this empty space here and this is going to place a breakpoint. We're going to talk about breakpoints in the future when we start talking about debugging. Let's now run this code under debug mode. I'm going to click here. And here you see that the code executed up to this point. Now we can go back to the website and see that the checkbox is selected. Go back to our code and now we're going to click here to resume the program. And that will simply finish performing the validation. Our test is done now. So we can switch from debug over to console and see that the test passed. Now just for fun, let's go ahead and add some negative testing to this test. If we look at the application here, we selected this checkbox. Now we're going to do another test to make sure that this other checkbox is not selected. But let's go back there and we're simply going to say assert false this time. I'm going to call sandbox page dot checkbox is selected. I'm going to pass in the number two this time. For the error, we can say checkbox is selected. If we rerun this test, it should still pass. Can you guess how we could go about unselecting a checkbox? That would be simple. Once we have selected a checkbox, we simply would call the same method to unselect it. Let's try it. I'm going to duplicate this line of code here. And what will happen, the first line will select the checkbox. The second line would unselect it. I'm going to put a breakpoint here and run this test in debug mode. And notice that it selected the checkbox. Let's go back and take a look. Here, option one is selected. If we go back to our code, we see that we are on this line, the one that's highlighted. 
when we click here to step over that line, it will be executed and it will unselect the checkbox. So let's click it. Now if we go back to the website, we can see that the checkbox is no longer selected. Well, that does it for checkboxes. See you in the next video where we will talk about dropdowns. Thank you.